We can get started by clicking on the Visual Studio Toolbox, locating the NetAdvantage Toolbox tab, and looking for Ultra Chart. We can double click this to add an instance of the control to the form. By default, you get this chart wizard that allows you to configure several properties and set data source and several other things. And if you ever wanted to turn it off, you can click on the Preferences button and then uncheck these here. So we'll close out of that. That gets an instance of the chart on the form in this div. And several things you can do from here, you can click on the Choose Preset button, and that will load the various presets that are referenced. The other thing you can do is change the type of chart. We can go through and select any one of these chart types that we have here. As you see, there's quite a few of them already there. You can actually go to a bar chart if you want, or maybe you could go to a 3D bar chart if you want. So it's all up to you what you want to use. Then if you have a, a data source that's already placed on your form in a component form, you can select it that from here, or you can use this to create a new one. And then we could also do some customizations, such as setting margins by using this little designer here. So let's just take a real quick look at the preferences. So I'm going to right click and go to the property pages just to show you which references were added for the chart. So we have the Infogistics web UI dot shared and the Infogistics web UI dot ultra web chart. These are the referenced assemblies so that way the classes and types that are used to create this chart are accessible. So one of the things that I'm going to do just to keep it simple and also for a sample and a proof of concept that you can also use is you can use the sample data that's provided in the Infogistics um, charting namespace so I'll show you how that works so we can set the chart dot data dot data source equals to And there's a class called demo table in the infogistics.ultrachart.data namespace. And there's a method on there that pretty much returns data that can be assigned at runtime to the chart. Now, the thing that you have to do with this chart is also called a data bind method, because that has to be called whenever you set the data source. So, just very simple, quick, and getting started. You just launch this application. Now you would replace that data with other data that you have that's your production data to make this work as well. If you ever wanted to learn how the chart works and you don't have that data available, you can always use that for your sample data or proof of concept as well. And here's the rendered web form with the chart get some tooltips here as well. Let's have a little bit of fun with this. Let's set some other types of properties on the chart. So we'll jump back to the designer here. We could also set one of these as well. We could take one of these presets. It also resets all the other properties too. So we could take we can use one of these or charts as well. So a couple of things that we could do while we're on here. If we wanted to do things with the axis, we could expand the axis property, set a back color, or we could um, work on, let's say, the x-axis and get to the labels. And here's the item format string, which is essentially, you could configure it by choosing any one of these, in, you know, these, one of these intrinsic values. So right now we have label and data. And you notice how when we choose this enumeration member, it changes the item format string property. So essentially, whatever you type in here as a string is what is applied to the x-axis labels. This little enumeration here is for your convenience. So that way, if you wanted to you know, jump around from different presets, you can set one of these. So right now, I'll just go for label and value. 
then we have orientation that we could set so we do vertical right facing or this is pretty much allows you to flip the labels around and then we could once we set it to custom we could do something like this we don't want this to be 45 degree angle and then we could configure series labels same thing same pretty much same basic property settings notice if we wanted to do the same thing for the y-axis we can also expand this and set the same properties if you have more than one x or y or z axis you can always go to the y2 or x2 axis to configure that as well since we're on a bar chart we get the bar chart property exposed here so if I were to flip this just a little thing about the Infogistics ASP.NET web chart so if I change the chart type to let's say pie chart in this example I now should have a pie chart property in the property window so here it is pie chart and then the other chart types are hidden from the property window. We do this dynamically so that it makes your current chart configuration easy. So if I go back to bar chart, I will now have that bar chart property available, which again is hidden before and now shown. Again, it's, it's one of the techniques that we've built into this chart, so it makes it easier for you to configure and not confuse you with millions of uh, additional properties that don't pertain to the current chart type. So if you set the series spacing to two, it kind of makes, you know, puts more spacing between each one of the series. If we make this a bigger number, you're going to see how far apart they are. So let's make it five, make it clear, see. Let's expand this a little bit so we'll make it a little bigger as well, make it take more space. We could also set some data related properties, and here, we find so you see data is a property and the sub objects members in this property are essentially where you set min value and max value you could also specify throughout the charts object model you could specify which column in my underlying data source or essentially which property in my underlying data source represents the column that contains the data or row labels this property here, when set to true, allows the data to be transposed from my underlying data source. So in other words, if you get back columns and rows, but you actually wish that the column names were values in your row and vice versa, rather than transforming your data source and then giving it to our chart, you can just set this simple property to true and it does it for you. You can also set some text here whenever the chart is empty. You can set it to something like so no data available. So we could also enable crosshairs that's enabled. Then we could set titles. We'll put some text in here. And we also have to set the visible property to true. And let's save this and run it and see what we get. So now I have my chart. I have some various things enabled. Here's my crosshairs where I could compare values across the board. I set the spacing to that value, but I noticed it's kind of a little too excessive right now. But for what data we have right now, it's acceptable just as a sample. And here we have the legend that's showing the individual values of the different rows. So again, this sample data comes across this way, but again, when you hook, when you hook this up to your real data, it'll automatically use whatever property names and individual values are within your data source. Infragistics on the web at infragistics.com.